Let's go ahead and stand up. Let's, uh, let's bless, uh, reach out your hands to these offering. Let's just uh, anoint the offering. Lord God, we just come before you, God. We just thank you, Lord, you are in our midst. We thank you, Lord, we can never outgive you, God. We can never outdo you, God. We can never outlove you, God. You are the God who can heal us from every disease. You are the God who does the impossible. God, just multiply your offerings, Lord, that whatever we can give, whether it's 10% or a little bit or even more, God, you will multiply for your kingdom's work here in Guam and throughout this world. Lord, and I pray now as I present and share your message, God, you just use me because I can't do anything without you. I'm just your humble servant. Lord, we were once all blind, but now you make us see. So, Lord, help uh, these words go forth and let everyone who has listening ears hear for the Spirit of God. And may they be blessed for your glory, your kingdom's work. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Okay. Just excuse me, I'm uh, my first time to do all this techno where I'm used to uh, preaching uh, with notes. Uh, let's see. Now I, I'm trying to uh, figure out where the PowerPoint is. Where would be the PowerPoint here? Pastor, All right, where's the PowerPoint? How do we do that? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Well, anyway, while we're trying to get the, uh, the PowerPoint set up, uh, I'd just like to share about myself. Uh, uh, you know, we traveling. Uh, People have been traveling, and I'm glad that, you know, some guys stay back so you can listen to me. Uh, I've been, uh, you know, different places, and God has allowed me to, uh, to uh, do things that, you know, only he can. And uh, my title of my sermon is uh, Establish a Legacy of Faith, Good Works for the Lord. Uh, what does that refer to? Uh, before I do that, let me just share a little bit of uh, something myself. Uh, I'm reminded the first time I left Guam, I was 18 years old, and I know some of these young men uh, that we've uh, been meeting in Life Sales, we've been talking about that, that it's good when you know the Lord when you're young, because you know your whole life is ahead of you. And I remember leaving, I still remember in the back of my mind, 1982, December, uh, right before, the, I believe it, 31st. So I remember I left Guam, and uh, my first time, you know, I came to Guam when I was four years old and grew up here basically, graduated from Jeff K. And, but, you know, God allowed me to come to see a, to visit a church like this. You know, isn't God good? I mean, you know, we, uh, we have this charismatic worship. I just, you know, it's just something that blows my mind that we can experience this in today's world. Amen? I've been in churches all around the world, uh, different, you know, just to visit. And it's just nothing uh, that can compare to to just the worship that we have, that we can lift our hands and we can acknowledge that God is good in our lives. But anyway, I left in uh, December 31st. So ever since then, I, I like to leave in holidays because I can remember when I left. Uh, that's how, what happens when you get a little old. I'm in my 50s. Uh, I won't tell how old I am, but uh, I have three more years before I become a, uh, what do you call that? A uh, you know that? senior citizen. So you can get that 10% discount at King's. So give me three more years, amen? But when I left, uh, so this sort of my uh, humorous story, int introduction, uh, my first time, and of course, I didn't know what to pack, so I just packed whatever I knew as an 18-year-old. Uh, of course, I brought my books, because I, I went to EOG one semester, but God opened the door for me to go to a Christian university, and that was my dream. And uh, I packed hardly, I stayed up, and we went to Japan, and you know, took us shopping, and it was so cold, I, I was so unprepared. Uh, so I had to go shopping to buy a, you know, a cheap, uh, uh, you know, one of those coats, you know, like about, the, at that time it was probably about $20, nowadays it probably cost 50 and I was still cold. So, but you know, God protected me the whole time. So praise God for that, he, 
he, he guides and protects you along your way. And then uh, uh, I decided to take a nap. At that time, it was on Northwest, and so they have that long layover where they'll pay your hotel, pay your transportation, and then you can uh, take the, the trip from uh, Narita all the way to like the States. At that time, I went to LA, uh, Los Angeles. And I said, oh man, I have like six hours, five hours before the flight, so I'll go take a nap. From LA to San Diego, my older brother was living in San Diego, so he decided, okay, you need to be at your school by Monday. It was Saturday, or it was Friday when we arrived in the US, the first. And by the way, I, I realized that that's how you can experience time travel, you know what I mean? When you're here in the Pacific, you can leave like 31st, and then you go somewhere like Honolulu, and you're back like a 30th. So I discovered time travel there. But anyway, so I traveled there, and then, again, to try to save money, because you know, I didn't have too much money. I didn't have money for luggage or anything. So I, uh, we decided to go on his truck, his pickup truck, the Nissan. I think it was called Datsun then but I think it was called Nissan uh, later on. And he had like a, what do you call that? A camper shell, a cover. So he said, let's just go ahead, drive cross country from San Diego to Oklahoma. So I didn't know how far that was. But I thought it was really far. <laughs> he said, we can do it in two days, you know, driving all night. And guess what? Uh, there was one uh, other young man with us. He was from uh, South America. And he couldn't drive. He didn't have license. So guess what? It was just my brother and I. And so here's my first time, didn't know how to drive in the States, and I had to you know, be baptized in fire, I had to learn to drive those long treks. But I was looking at the map, we, we passed through, uh, uh, what do call that, Arizona, so it's all desert at that time, still is, I believe, uh, most parts of the interstate. And then we went to Las Cruces, New Mexico. Now I was looking at the map, I said, oh, that's way south. So maybe it's not, uh, it's not cold there, but guess what? We drove all day, Saturday night, 11 o'clock. Don't ask me how that happened. No motels were open. And guess what? Las Cruces, I think that means the cross or crucifixion or something, it was below freezing. And here we are, 11 o'clock at night. We went to like different places. No uh, hotel or motel was open. Now I know how Jesus felt. And, but anyway, uh, so my brother said, okay, let's just camp out here. And then, Below freezing, now I know that was a mistake. So, but we tried it. I wasn't prepared again. I had only a few amount of clothing to try to keep me warm, that, that cheap jacket I bought. And we stayed overnight. Next thing I know, when I woke up in the morning, guess what? It felt like I had hypothermia. My legs were so frozen, I thought I had frostbite. We uh, were ready to cut it off. But, you know, God was good. He, uh, he protected me there, and then we kept traveling. Passed through Texas, and you see those, uh, at that time, those oil going up and down. You know, those are from Texas. You see that? And they had an image. Oh, wow, these are the, uh, what do you call that? Picture of the transformer on steroids. There's a visible transformer, you know, trying to dig for their food or something. You know, that was my image of those things. And then, but finally we made it to Oklahoma. God was good. So I survived that. And then guess what? I had to carry my luggage. What my luggage was, you know, the old days. Going for luggage, you know, you're from the Philippines, what do you do? Get a pamper box. So that's what I had. I had a pamper box, and I had to fill it up with my books, because I, I, I used some of my books also in the States. Thank God for that. And next thing I know, I'm trying to carry it. I said, oh, Lord, I made it through a thousand of miles in the ocean, a thousand of miles on the road, and here I am. I'm going to be crushed by my box. <laughs> God is good, though. But he brought somebody to help carry. And ever since then, I've learned that when you put your trust in the Lord, He will always bring somebody. Amen? And so, you know, I, I put it out to you. I mean, I've been Guam now for a while, and I know how it feels to be in, like, in the States or somewhere. You don't know anybody, you know? Uh, let me know. You know, we could, I can take you anywhere in the island. Uh, we can help you tour. If you're into sports, I can help you with tennis, soccer. Those are the sports I play. So God's good, and Praise God for the church, because we can experience that love that only Jesus can give. Amen? Amen. Uh, next slide, please. Hallelujah. So that's a, basically a part of my personal testimony. Let him boast, boast in the Lord. Uh, came to Guam when I was age four. 
Uh, like I shared, I uh, became a believer by going to, you know, those old days, they call it Teen Challenge. Praise God for that church. Uh, I was under Pastor John Pineda. And, but you know what? Like, sometimes we think when we become saved, everything's fine Danny. But, man, after that, I almost got killed at least five car accidents here in Guam. And that's amazing. Here it is, you know, doing fine. And next thing you know, you become a Christian. So, you know, when you become a Christian, you have to be ready. But in spite of that, God protected. You know, those were the old days here in Guam. The roads were not very uh, well paved, especially in the highway. I remember doing 360s. And every time, praise God, we didn't hit a car. We just are able to stop somewhere in the middle of the road. No cars around, at least five times. Uh, I've been in uh, like a, almost like a shipwreck. We experienced a storm there in sea. And when I saw the perfect storm and that, the waves that I, I saw that, I said, oh, Lord, my first time to be seasick. But God takes us through that. And then I was in uh, China for a mission trip, and I had to uh, overcome severe bronchitis, and he was able to help me overcome that. Again, it's not my own doing, but it's God. When you put your mind and heart to serve God, he will bring you to a situation, whatever you go to, and I'll talk more about that later on, but he is the one who does it. Amen? God told me several times to go, so I went. You know, for example, from Guam to the Philippines. I know there are people here today, there are sisters that, you know, God is going to take your path, even before you became Christian, and he's going to use that for his glory. He's going to use your past. doesn't matter what you went through. You know what I mean? Because everything we do in this world will not last, but everything we do for Christ will what? Will always last forever. Amen? Then I, when I went to a Christian university, I was there for five years. Again, that's the Lord's doing. I don't know how it survived, but the Lord provided. And I came back to Guam in 1988. Of course, I, I work here in Guam, in Christian schools. And then I went to Saipan. And I'd like to acknowledge my wife, Irene. We met in Saipan two years. So sometimes when God tells you to go or when you're in trouble, you don't know what you're doing, he gives you a blessing. And praise God for my wife, Irene. Yeah. Yeah, she's been my uh, helpmate, my ministry partner, and of course, you know, the mother of my two, our two wonderful sons, and they've also graduated from Christian University. Again, that's the Lord's doing. Uh, you know what I mean? When you go through life, the more you trust in the Lord, the more you stick to his word, he will bring you through. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Uh, so, i just like to close that uh, one of the ways I got this message was that when he graduated last month, uh, they start sending email and they start talking about that legacy, that this is the 50th graduating class, and they want to invite parents to graduate, and that, you know, because they came to the same school, and that's how the Lord sort of revealed that. But uh, just uh, seeing him graduate, it gave me the message today, you know, God is faithful and true. Amen? Next slide, please. I'll leave. Uh, uh, before I get into the heart of the message, because I know I, I have like uh, two hours, right? Oh, sorry, uh, 20 minutes. Okay. Well, we'll make it about 30 minutes. Uh, in school, you know, uh, Dr. Billy Joe here can test it out. We always have progress reports. So I propose to you today uh, your spiritual progress report. Okay? What have you done with Jesus Christ and your walk with Jesus Christ since the beginning of 2017? See yourself as everlasting God will see you, a beloved God with a divine destiny. Okay, excuse me, I write better than. I can memorize, so I'm going to read this out. Chosen to do the Lord's great work in this time, in this season, in this land, amidst the greatest of all generations. God's generation. We talk about uh, BB. What's BB? Anybody? Those who are older than 40? What's BB? Baby boomers. You were born before, uh, right after World War II up to 1964. My wife and I, and those who were born in 1964, you were in the last year of the baby boomers. After that, you became the what? X generation. And then after that, I believe it was, I'm not too sure, someone can correct me, 1996, you become the millennials. So I think that's up to uh, 2000 something. After 2005, I think you don't exist yet. I don't know. <laughs> someone will come up with a term. Man, before I already share my personal testimony, so I just want to challenge you right now with this question for the Lord. What would you do in my life, or what would you do in my life? Amen? Let's go ahead and everybody say that. Let's say to the Lord real quick. You can whisper it. One shout out. Go ahead. What, Lord, what would you do in my life? 
Amen? Remember that, and uh, remember that as you leave today. First, follow the everlasting Lord through his word and godly leaders. Amen? Uh, Pastor Albert is very good about sharing this. Second, listen to his voice. Third, be moved by the power of the Holy Spirit to reach out to others in need. Activate God's GPS. As a writer, and that's one of the things God has blessed me this past several years, he's revealed to me different things to write about. But that's God's GPS according to the word of God. Great power and strength. You can find it in Isaiah 40, 26. To guide, direct you in this world. A lost soul in your area of influence needs you. And, you know, you look at yourself. What can I do? You know, I don't have any skills. I can't play guitar. I can't sing like Pastor Bride. You know what I mean? I can't preach like Pastor Eric or Pastor Albert. But what has God put in your hand? There is something. And as you listen to his voice, and, of course, meditate on his word. Okay, the Bible, that's the, the word for you. You just need to be faithful to God's service. Don't give up. When you encounter troubles, we all have it. I mean, uh, we had car problems this week. We had plumbing problems this week. You know, just right, right before I'm trying to prepare for this message. But in spite of that, God will take you through it. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> this is by Bill Graham. And so, again, uh, all these things sort of came together in the last three weeks. So I got this from, uh, uh, I believe, Facebook or Pastor Albert. And so I came up with this outline three weeks ago, and I've been working on it the past three weeks. But the, leg the greatest legacy one can pass on to one's children and grandchildren is not money or other material things, but a legacy of character faith by uh, Billy Graham. Amen? The legacy year we're talking about is what you give down to your children and grandchildren. Understand? And now, of course, a lot of times people want money, other material things. They want a car. They want something. Okay? But praise God, when you get a legacy character faith, that cannot be beaten because that's for eternity. Amen? Amen. Let's go next slide. <coughs> okay, I'd just like to recognize and do a give honor now before I get into the different legacies and time. You know, give honor to our senior pastors, Albert Judy. Of course, he allowed, they allowed me to preach here today. They took their chance, you know, making sure I don't uh, get all nervous and all that. But they responded to God's call to found Abundant Life Church here in Dedo, Guam in 1995. Today, ALC is what? By your attendance, by your commitment, by your work, we are a vibrant evangelistic church with dynamic worship and a growing body of believers for God determined to reach our community and what? of the world for Jesus Christ. Amen? I believe God has not done with us yet. Let's move on. Uh, I'd like to recognize that our family, our pastors, our three daughters, of course, that's why they're gone. They, uh, one of them had to get married. Okay, so that's always a beautiful time. And that was Rebecca, but uh, Hosanna, Rachel, they're all serving the Lord. Okay, next. Then another example legacy I'd like to recognize is Pastors Joe and Lou Beneventi, uh, their children, Joyce, Joe, Eric, Leshona. Okay, let's give them a hand. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You know, just like Pastor Albert and Judy, you know, uh, we believe not just the children, and they're doing work here in ALC, but the grandchildren, developing to ministers for the Lord, Jesus Christ, and for Abundant Life Church. Uh, the more you get to our age, I know some of you can relate to me, we start looking back. I don't have grandchildren yet, so I don't know. You know, my sons are still young. But we look back and we say, Holy Lord, what have we done for you? And, you know, and, but when I look back, I see that God is still not done. I thought I would never reach 50 years old because I was a, you know, I disobeyed my parents all the time. Even when I was a Christian, I didn't know how to obey my parents sometimes. And... I said, oh, Lord, what's that verse in the Bible? Honor your parents and what? And you will be what? You will be blessed with long life, right? It will do, go well with you. And so I thought, oh, God, I'm not going to reach 50. That's it. I'm in trouble. So now I'm here. I'm over 50. So I know God is not done with me. Amen? And he's not done with you too. Okay, let's go to the next one. And of course, we recognize the, the family there. Godly family heritage, Sister Joyce and her family. There's Brother Joe and family, and Pastor Eric there in the back with, with his family. Amen? Uh, let's also recognize, uh, the next slide, uh, that pastoral staff, active members of ALC Guam, legacies of faith, good works for the Lord. 
Now, I feel strongly about this topic because when you look back, you cannot think just in the present. God is God of what? The past, present, and what? Future. Amen? And he has something for us. And we'll, we'll, I'll close my message with that later on. But, you know, just the fact that you're here today means that God has something in store for you. And as you take the time to listen to his voice, not just me speaking, but in his word. I'll go through scriptures later on relating to legacy, and you will see it's throughout the Bible and it's throughout this world. Okay? Next slide. Okay, uh, I'd like to uh, just uh, to try now to get a next point. I understand your foundation of faith, the three R's of a Christian. It's uh, crucial to understand the progression of faith in Jesus Christ before establishing a legacy of faith. You know we have three R's, right, in, in education, right? Uh, Dr. Bill Joe, what is it? Arithmetic, writing, and what was the last one? Reading, reading. So these are, I propose to you, these are the three R's for a Christian. Number one, repentance. Be a searcher of God is true. Listen to the word. Psalms 139 says, Search me, O God, know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Acts 26 says, They should repent and turn to God, not to man's ways, because it fails. You know, I will fail you. Pastor Albert will fail you. Anybody in this church will fail you. We're not perfect, but we know the one who is perfect. Who is the King of Kings? Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so we want you to do that today. If you have not done that, we will give you an opportunity later on. Number two, redemption. You were bought with a price. Redemption comes from the word redeem. It means to buy back. You now become what? Because you've been redeemed. Now you become a saint for God. Amen? So you can call each other saints. That's okay. Amen? Because that's what God is doing in our lives, okay? Making us what? In Galatians 3, Christ redeem us from the curse of the law. You know, when you're growing up, before you became Christian, or even now, some of you are adults, before you became Christian, you know that when, you, no one has to tell you what sin is. It's there, right? When you do something and your conscience tells you it's wrong, that's sin. I come up with a saying for sin. S-I-N separates I from nigh. That's sin. Amen? So remember that next time when you want to figure out what sin is. If you're conscious, something in your spirit tells you it's wrong, then basically it's sin. And of course, we study the Bible, we know things that become sin in our life. Amen? Uh, let's go to number three, Revelation. The Lord will show by his work his word, excuse me, and by the Holy Spirit so that you can truly become a servant of Almighty God. Talks about this in 1 Samuel 3.10, so you can read that if you have time. But in Ephesians 1.17, it says, The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Okay, know him better. Why do we need to know him better? So we can serve him better. Amen? God is always wanting the best for you. He never wants you to fail. Uh, we failed so many things. I failed in classes. Even though I got good grades, my son was uh, way smarter than me. Uh, they get straight A's, but uh, I try to. But uh, I failed at least one or two classes. And I know how it feels. I failed in different areas of my life. But you know what? What does the Bible say? When you fall down, just get back up. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ is the one that's going to strengthen you and let you overcome any situation, anything in your life. Amen. Let's go next slide. Uh, definition of legacy. Uh, again, I'm, I want to go through some examples because we're running out of time, so I'll go through this real quick. Uh, it can be anything handed down for the past. Like I said, it could be a car, it could be a piece of clothing, it could be like my, my mom when she passed away last year. Uh, the, myself with siblings, we were able to get like a, from a knife set. That could be a legacy. Uh, for my son, that's my son there. You can say hi to him, my wife. But anyway, he graduated in May last month, and that's another definition. A student at a school that was attended by his parents. But for this morning, we want to focus on legacy of faith and what? Doing good works for the Lord by building spiritual heritage in our homes through development of godly character and continuous Christian service. Uh, people, God, it's not just, you know, oh, that's it, I've been Christian, oh, that's it, oh, I, I can't do it. You know, Christian life is always what? It's always on the go. Amen? 
A lot of times, uh, too often in this world we live in today, we want everything instantly. But God's Word says you cannot just become perfect in your own abilities overnight. You know, it is Jesus who makes us perfect in Him. Amen? You need to strive. You need to follow His Word and come to church. When you come to church, you fellowship or prayer means, or whatever God leads you to do, okay, He will begin to speak to you. Uh, all these years of... of uh, going to churches, traveling, and just studying about his word, reading book. You know, God is the one who will bring back to mind. Because our mind is very limited, right? We know that. But we have a God who has what? You know, we talk about smartphones like that. But God has what? He has the super, super computer of all time. He knows everything that's needed for your life. He knew everything. And he's going to continue to work in your life to do what? to do good for his pleasure. Amen? So next slide. Uh, sorry about the color of this one. But this is uh, legacies not to follow. I called, they call, we can call these anti-legacies. When men and women choose to follow Satan, his demons, and create an unholy heritage or a family line for evil. Uh, this picture, you can't really see it. That's a picture of, of Ahab. He was the son of Omri. This is found in uh, First Kings. And, and they both chose to do evil. And of course, Ahab married Jezebel. And this is where the prophet Elijah became famous, right? It was through, through having to post this king and the queen that these miracles happened through Elijah. He had prophesied. So, amen? So we don't want that kind, all right? And I'll talk about another example later on. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Okay, now I'm going to start rolling through this real quick. And uh, later on, when my computer works again, uh, try to get notes if anybody's interested by next week. Uh, Legacies of faith in the Old Testament. I listed four. Abraham Isaac. Abraham was the father of faith. He passed this down, down to Isaac. Uh, Jacob and Joseph. Uh, Joseph was Jacob's son through Rachel, and it was through Joseph what happened. The whole nation of Israel was saved from destruction of Egypt. And we know that eventually uh, came about when Moses had to take the, the people to the promised land. Uh, three, Jesse, the father of David, grandfather of Solomon. Jesse passed on his uh, heritage. We have Isaiah and his two sons, great prophet. Uh, his sons, Shir, Jashub, and Maher, Shalal, Hashbaz. Okay, pretty long name, but God put his spirit in them through the, through the godly heritage of Isaiah. Okay, then we can also see legacies of faith in the New Testament. Joseph, husband Mary, was a great grandson of Eleazar. Now, Again, it's because of the godly heritage that Joseph became the man he was. Amen? It was instrumental to being a mentor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Philip, the evangelist, had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. So again, we see this passing on down. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. Lois uh, was the mother of Eunice and grandmother to Timothy, who was mentored as evangelist to what? The ministry of Apostle Paul. Amen? Okay, let's go to the next slide. Uh, we can see legacies of faith throughout history. European example, Wesley family, John and Charles Wesley. John uh, Wesley is known for his sermons and helping establish a uh, church there in England. Uh, Charles Wesley is considered one of the greatest hymn writers at all time. Men, all because the mother had faith in the children. Uh, the U.S. example, and I like to get into this, I just found this uh, two days ago. Jonathan Edwards, godly her legacy, he helps her the Great Awakening in the U.S. over 300 years ago, even before it became the United States of America. It was still the colonies. Look at what, look what great men came from his family line. This was done about 100, 100 years ago. From John Ed, Jonathan Edwards' uh, line, you have one U.S. vice president, three U.S. senators, three governors, three mayors, 13 college presidents, 30 judges, 65 professors, 80 public office holders, 100 lawyers, especially 100 missionaries. Amen? Look what God can do when you choose to serve him. Uh, let's look, though, at the uh, descendants of Max Jutes. Uh, from his line came what? Seven murderers, 60 thieves, and 50 women, debauchery, whatever that means, 130 other convicts, and so on. But look at this. It cost the state more than $1,250,000. So you see, when you choose not to follow the Lord, what can happen? Okay, when you choose not to establish that legacy of faith. Okay, let's go on. Legacy is faith in the world today. We can see this in Guam with our first local superintendent, Pastor Reverend John Pineda there at, 
at St. Paul's, his son, Pastor Paul Pinea, now is the pastor of the church there. It's the, one of the largest churches here in Guam, the Pentecostal, in Guam, Micronesia. I want to share also a great mission example. I just found this uh, last, uh, last night. Of the Indians, it was Jim Elliott, and he only had one daughter because he was killed, right? He became martyr there in Ecuador to the Oxford Indians. And that one daughter, Valerie Elliott Shepherd, became a pastor's wife, had eight children, homeschooled, and teaches Bible studies. Amen? Can you ever escape the love of God? Amen? No. Let's go, go ahead. Your example. You can put your name there, and you can repeat this after me. In the name of Jesus Christ, you put your name, our blessed Lord Savior, I have a legacy of faith for all time. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to close now because I think my time is up. Be on the road to a legacy of faith by practicing your spiritual three R's. I mentioned three R's. Today with God's ABC. So just a reminder, the three R's, repentance. Okay, be a searcher for God and he will find you. Redemption, become a saint for the Lord so he can prepare you for great work. And revelation, bond to Christ to be what? His servant. Uh, we learned that in Pastor Gilbert's sermon, developing a servant's heart. If you want to be the greatest in God's kingdom, what? Learn to be the servant of all. That's what Jesus was a great example of a servant. And then we have our ABCs, accept, believe, confess. To become a Christian, you need to do those three. But praise God for these ABCs, D and F are not bad grades. Okay, for this, uh, D means what? Determined to serve God always. And F is what? Fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Amen. Now uh, I'd like to go to the next slide. And I'd like to close that, you know, uh, let's see here. Right here, the godly legacy of Bill Graham. Uh, you, you tell yourself, you know, or you can call me uh, Pastor Isaiah or Pastor G for short. Call me Mr. G in the schools. Uh, what, what can I do? You know, I don't have any skill, like I mentioned before. I may not be gifted like that. You know, but, you know, what, what God has in your hands, just give it up to him. You never know. I mean, it was just two years ago I said, Lord, what am I going to do? I'm in debt. You know, we have to pay all this money. But, you know, God began to reveal things. You know, and uh, I'll be sharing that as the Lord works. But just the fact that I'm up here today is a blessing. I never imagined that I would be here today before you. God is the one that gives me the ability to speak. It's not my own doing. And these experiences I have, I tell my wife, I can just now write stories because he's just revealing things. And you know what? Uh, it says there in the Word that if you want to know if you're young and old, and in uh, one of the books of the Old Testament, it says, young men shall what? Young men and women shall what? See visions. But if you're old men, you're, you'll do what? Dream dreams. So I've been dreaming a lot. <laughs> And I've been writing that down, so you can tell your neighbor, you know, uh, have you been dreaming or seeing visions? So hopefully if you're young, you're seeing vision, because your whole life is ahead of you. But you know what? We can't stop there, because if we say our whole life is ahead of us, then we know that happens. Something can happen. So you need to t make the most of your time. Amen? Life is in God's hand. It's like when you cut the grass, and the Bible says that. The grass is very what? It's very temporary. One day it's there, next day what? It gets cut, it's gone. The flowers is there, it dies, it falls. We see this a lot in our yard because we have to clean it all the time. Amen? So you don't have Bill Graves legacy, but uh, let's go to the next slide. And then I just want to remind you again, we can all give a legacy of character faith. And then we'll close with this next slide. And if you can have the uh, uh, right here. The, uh, I talked about the three R's, but now I'd like to close with you experiencing the fourth R, restoration. Often due to our actions and inactions, we feel we may have failed God, or our family, or our friends, and even ourselves. Amen? Take hope, God's word says, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me, to you. He will not fail you or forsake you. This is in 1 Chronicles 28, 20. Do the great exchange, something I, I came up with. Let him take your sins and sorrows and what? Replace it, replace those with God's goodness and glory. Amen? And so if we can uh, go ahead and have the, uh, the, uh, the musicians, we can close. I would like to take this moment for 
to give you an opportunity. If you haven't experienced a life that is in Christ, you can experience it today. I can do the scripture, say, sure. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow, like this Bible year. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Amen? Uh, it was very nice uh, last week, Pastor Lou spoke about the courageous father, and not just fathers, right? We should all be courageous. Men, women, young and old, we should be courageous. But uh, that was also my closing for today. Amen? So I'm just going to reiterate that. But I also want to share what I wrote uh, an article last week. It's found there in 1 Timothy. It says what? I have what? I have fought the good fight of faith. I, I fought the good fight. I what? I have run the race. I have kept the faith. Amen? I want you to hearken that word, and if you could stand. And, you know, if you, if you feel you want prayers, we have pastors here. You know, we have even uh, believers can pray for you. If you don't know Jesus in your heart, that is the thing that we need to experience first before we can experience any legacy of faith. It starts there. It starts with you taking a simple step. Say, Jesus, what? Here am I. Send me. But before you can go to that step, you need to what? Experience what? The love of God in you. You need to have your sins cleansed. Amen? It's not your own doing. It is the love of Jesus. The word of God says that he will make a new thing in you. So if we could just go ahead, close our eyes, just meditate the word, and seek the Lord. Amen? And we'll just take time to uh, allow you, if you want to come up, pastors, if can, pastors or uh, other godly leaders you can come up and uh, have it open for those. Or if you're just seeking God's will in your life, what should I do, Lord? Or I have all these problems at home or with my work. You know, we're here to pray because there's only one 100% foolproof way, and it's God's way, not our way. Man, he's the only one that can take you through hurt and pain. And he's the one that can deliver you and show you a better way. Man, uh, I can't, you know, just stress how good is the love of God. So we will take the time. If you, if you want to, if, if you don't want to come up, that's fine. Go ahead, just raise your hand. Anybody? Man, anybody, anybody else? You want to receive that? You're, you have a sister here. Someone could pray. Okay. So let's go ahead. Uh, there are some responding. And those who are standing close by. Okay. If you can pray for them also. Then I'll go ahead close in prayer. In Jesus' name. Lord God, we want to experience this love that's only found in you, God. Because without you, we are nothing. Like the, the song says, nothing is impossible with you. You're the God that heals us. You're the God that takes us to a better place. And when we don't know what to do, you are the one who's going to speak your still small voice. And you're going to say, son, daughter, I have a greater plan for you. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't go back to the world. Whatever's trying to take you, the things of this world, whatever it is, God knows. You know, whatever that sin is that's trying to hold you back, just give it to the Lord. Let him take it and let him replace it with his goodness and glory. He wants to do a great work in you. He wants to perform a great work in you. He wants it to happen not just in your life, but in your family's life. And especially, let's pray for the, the grandparents, the parents. You want this to be done in your children. There's no greater reward or blessing than to see your children Become faithful to the Lord because the Lord is well pleased in that. And you can rejoice knowing that no matter what happens, even if your life is cut short, even if you're just 18 years old, you're 28, 48, or even 88 years old, He will do a wonderful thing. So Lord, we just come before you now. 
But I pray that this message of saying, God, that we know that you are the God that delivers us. We thank you, Lord, for salvation. So those who raise your hand, just repeat after me now. Dear God, I thank you. I am a sinner in need of grace. I come before you with open hearts, open mind, open life. Take the sin and wrong in my life. Make it new through your blood, Jesus. And Lord, I thank you by faith I receive now. The Bible says if you, what? If you confess that the Lord Jesus and what? You believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. So now, Lord, I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, we just come before you now. Uh, we'd like to call up the, uh, the uh, worship team. This is their last Sunday before they go. Then we'll, the pastors will anoint them. So just down here, Pastor so Pastor Brian, you can call your team. And pastors, if you can pray for them. Please have the worship team. And for those who are also... Uh, coming with us to Hillsong as well. If you guys want to come to Hillsong, you can tag along if you want. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray. Anybody else? There's more. There's more. All right. They're all just right. shy. Oh, okay. They're all right. Amen. They're Let's shy. give them a clap. Let's give them a clap. <laughs> God's going to do a mighty work. Let's go ahead and pray for them. In Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we just thank you, God, for your anointing, Lord, upon these young men and women. God, we pray for the leadership of Pastor Brian, God, and his wife, God. Lord, you blessed them with this opportunity, and, but we know it's also a responsibility. So we pray because, God, you are the God. You direct whom you direct, you will protect. Whom you guide, you will provide. So right now, in Jesus' name, every step of the way, no matter what obstacles come, in the airlines or in the air or in land, wherever they go, and by bus or by taxi, you will be in charge of them, God. By your Holy Spirit, you will guide them. You will give them the words to share. If they meet people who are hurt, or dying, or lost, need encouragement, need a word from you, Lord, Lord, I pray you will give them words to speak, you will give them boldness in their heart and their minds, God, to say what is from the Spirit of the living God. So we thank you, Lord, for this right now. And we pray, God, fill them up with overflowing. May they have a, a blessed time with other worship leaders and musicians for the Lord there in Australia. God, may you open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. God, for the furtherance of your kingdom. And when they come back to Guam, they will be excited, Lord, to worship you. There will be a high-sounding praise, God, that will fill this place, AOC, like never before, for your kingdom's glory, God. And we thank you for this, and even as we send them off, God, we take the time, Lord, to, to, to have our, our offering, God, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, by faith. We will build a parking lot, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we know it costs money, more money than we have available right now. But God, we see with the eyes of faith. We thank you as your people come to, to give an offering. Let them come again with a cheerful heart, knowing that they can never all give God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank Lord, you, Pastor Jose.